Hi, my name is Jason Baker and this is my commute. Um, this started out as a project for a class I'm taking called Urban Transportation Planning and I decided to go with an online video format for this project so that I could cross post it to my favorite local blog, orangepolitics.org and also so that I could put it on my newly revamped homepage at jasonbaker.us. So whatever brings you to this video, welcome and let's get started. I live on Graham Street in Chapel Hill, which is about a mile away from my usual destination, which is campus. Most days I'll choose to walk, but some days instead I'll ride my bike or take the bus. In this video, we'll mostly look at my walking trip. As I leave my house, I have two different options. Either I can walk down Graham Street to where it meets Rosemary and continue to campus that way, or I can cut through my neighbor's backyard, across the Hargrave Center, and along a series of pedestrian paths to campus. While I prefer this quicker back way, it causes both physical and legal hurdles, as I'm forced to walk across private property. One of the reasons I'll often take the back way to campus is that Graham Street has the potential to be a very unsafe place for pedestrians. It's not uncommon to see cars here speeding well in excess of 10 miles over the posted speed limit, and as we lack sidewalks, cars and pedestrians are forced to share the same pathway. Because of on-street parking and other obstacles, it's not hard to find yourself pressed between this oncoming traffic and a very hard place. Unfortunately, Graham Street's not slated to get sidewalks as part of the Northside Mobility Report because of neighborhood opposition. As you can see from this Google Earth flyover, there's a lot of roads and parking lots between my house and campus, but not a lot of people space. While I walk mostly for health and environmental reasons, walking has its cost. The sheer number of intersections provide a definite safety risk, and I wouldn't be surprised if all that exhaust doesn't have some negative health ramifications. Here at the intersection of Graham and Rosemary, you see the eventual site of the Greenbridge development. Greenbridge is a mixed-use project which has received a lot of attention both locally and nationally for its focus on environmental sustainability. Unfortunately, at the moment, it's a bit of a pedestrian hindrance as green construction fences round three sides of the block. Fortunately, Greenbridge will be making some much-needed transportation improvements to this block including better sidewalks, as well as a real bus stop, including a next bus sign and a bench to replace what's currently merely a sign tacked onto a power pole. The bus stop I just showed you is serviced by the CW route. However, if you want to take a bus to campus, it's probably faster to walk one block up to Franklin Street, which is serviced by the J, the F, and the M, though not all buses run at all different times of the day. Depending on the time of day, the headways between these buses can be fairly long, and unfortunately, though it's served by three different routes, these buses tend to clump up together. Because Chapel Hill Transit buses often don't stick very close to their schedule, the online tracking ability provided by the next bus system has been a real help. Unfortunately, it has some drawbacks, too. Dropped signals and drivers forgetting to turn the systems on often mean my bus doesn't show up at all. Usually, I just walk. The sidewalks on Rosemary vary quite a bit. Those in front of the church over there are probably less than two feet wide. That's hardly enough space to pass somebody walking the opposite direction, especially if that somebody is a bicyclist who, for whatever reason, chose not to ride in the road. The sidewalks through here are in various states of disrepair. Some end abruptly into pavement, others will end into gravel, and in some parts there aren't sidewalks at all. In one case, the sidewalk looks like a great engineering model for what a rumble strip ought to look like. On the other hand, some sections of Rosemary are actually pretty nice. Check out the trees, the lighting, the benches, and even a bike rack on this section in front of the Greenbridge sales office. Just ahead, though, the sidewalk ends abruptly into a parking lot with nowhere to go. Fortunately, crosswalks are available, but despite bright yellow signs marking in both directions that drivers should yield to pedestrians, I've rarely been yielded to in this section. The sidewalks on that side aren't any better. Another problem with Rosemary are the high number of curb cuts for vehicular traffic. In this short section here, probably just a couple hundred feet, there's six distinct cuts for vehicles pulling in and out of these parking lots. They make it difficult for both walkers as well as the disabled. Had we gone the back way out of my house, after a little walking, here's where we'd be. That sign is from the police department asking for ways to improve this pedestrian corridor. I recommend adding safety lighting and maybe removing the fence so it feels a little less like a prison as you walk from one side to the other. As you get closer to campus, the quality of the sidewalks on both sides of the street improve, probably paid for by some of the newer developments on this end. I hope I've already crossed the street at this point, because there's no marked crosswalks in this section. Also, the steep grade of the hill makes it really difficult for cars to see you if you cross against traffic. 
Usually, this parking lot is another area where I'll take a short trip through private property to shave a little bit off of my walk. After cutting behind the Aveda Institute, I end up just outside of Chapel Hill's parking lot number 5. As lot 5 is set to be the home of another mixed-use development project, I'm sure pretty soon I'll have to change my path again. And so here we are at the intersection of Franklin Street and Columbia, which is definitely the biggest intersection I have to walk through, and probably one of the most dangerous intersections for pedestrians in the entire state. In addition to the high volumes of pedestrians this intersection has to handle, it probably also has more trips from people driving in from out of town, who may be less familiar with the area, and perhaps less likely to yield to those on foot. If I had decided to ride the bus into campus instead of walking today, this is one of two bus stops I might have ended up at. As we zoom out, take a look at the sidewalks, much wider and quite a few more amenities than we saw on Rosemary Street. On the other hand, this should be expected, as this is right in front of campus. We've crossed our last street and are here on McCorkle Place, where there are very few hazards to pedestrian travel. Aside from a possible loose brick or a bicyclist who's unwilling to get out of the way, we're pretty much home free from this point. And here we are at New East, the home of the Department of State and Regional Planning here at UNC. I hope you've enjoyed our trip, and I look forward to your feedback. Thanks a lot.